Hey there, welcome to our uh, series on spiritual disciplines and, and knowing God. We're going to talk today a little bit about prayer. Prayer is obviously an incredibly important uh, part of our walk with God. In fact, it may be one of the most important ones uh, of the spiritual disciplines. And in fact, it's a it's a topic that it could take weeks to unpack, but uh, I'm going to try to do so in just a few moments here, at least just enough to kind of get you started and hopefully point you towards danger uh, as you uh, begin to walk with God and as you uh, really grow in your prayer life. There's a quote that I really like by Robert Mulholland. He says, we tend to think of prayer as something we do in order to produce the results we believe are needed, or rather to get God to produce the results. Prayer becomes a shopping list of things to do to be accomplished, an attempt to manipulate the symptoms of our lives without really entering into a deep, vital, transforming relationship with God. And I love that that quote because it, it reminds us of the fact that prayer isn't just a shopping list. It's not just something that we do uh, to tick a box of spirituality, but rather it is very much how we connect with God. It's There's a transformation that takes place within us and in our relationship with God as we are devoted to the discipline of prayer. Now, it is a discipline. It's, it's certainly, uh, some of us, we don't like disciplines. We, we'd rather not even use that word because it sounds too, too, uh, too hard or too sterile. But, but the truth is, it is a discipline. Uh, Psalm 55, verse 17 says, Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Uh, Psalm 88, 13 says, But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. When we go to the New Testament, we see you know, Jesus uh, setting an example in, in Mark chapter 1 of just getting up very early in the morning and going off to a solitary place so that he could pray. And we even see Jesus at times in his life uh, separating himself from the other disciples and going up on a mountainside to pray all night. So there, it, it, it's a regular occurrence. It's something that's a discipline in our lives, something that we, we have to be devoted to. Now, the most basic sort of levels of understanding prayer, and if you're new to faith, and perhaps you're seeing this for the first time, or, or, or kind of being introduced to prayer, uh, there's an acronym that, that's very common uh, to use and if you're just learning how to pray, uh, and that is ACTS. Uh, it stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. I know when you're first being introduced to praying, it's like, well, what do I pray? How do I pray? What do I pray about? And this is a great sort of rubric, if you will, to, to how to pray. It's very similar to the, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the only thing missing from the Lord's Prayer is Thanksgiving, um, but in terms of this acronym. But these three, these four things, or if you think through your uh, time of prayer, spend time adoring and honoring and praising God. Spend some time confessing, you know, being vulnerable with who you are, where you are at. Um, being grateful, you know, thanksgiving, let that be a, a regular part of our prayer life. And then supplication means simply the things that we're asking of God, the things we're asking for. Now, I, I say that just to offer as, a, as an opportunity to kind of have a rubric, right? Um, but as, we're, as we mature as disciples, it's important that we thicken our understanding of prayer. And so I want to, you know, offer us a few extra thoughts that, that kind of things that would hang on that axe sort of rubric but but maybe look at it a little bit different way with a little bit in a little bit deep in a little bit deeper way as well and, and thinking about prayer in terms of moving inward moving upward and moving outward when i say moving inward the idea there is that prayer is is an inner transformation it transforms us from the inside and so when we come to god in prayer certainly vulnerability is incredibly important uh, it's being real with god it's so that we can be changed. I think sometimes we like to be real with God, but we don't want to be changed. And let me just tell you, here it is. Here's what I am. And, 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 and yet there's no impetus to be more like him. But that really is the point, to be real, to trust in God, to know that he is doing his work in us as well, and that we are going to be transformed, and that that is the goal. Uh, C.S. Lewis said, lay before him what is in us, not what ought to be in us. And so it's not posturing. It's not. It's, it's putting before God who we really are uh, within, in, in, inside. Maybe the part that not in it, no one else sees necessarily, but we are laying that out before God. And so when you think about this idea of inner transformation, we are, in many ways, as disciples, trying to become like Jesus, be transformed from within. And prayer is a big part of that. And there's a few different types of prayer, perhaps, that that have been used over the centuries that might help us with this. One is called prayer of reflection. 
The idea is there is to be highly intentional about reflecting upon our day and looking for ways and areas where God was present, where maybe God was absent, where we felt God's absence, I should say, uh, places where we felt like we were in line with God, maybe times when we were w- without, and, and just making that a, a regular habit. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You know, David, or the writer here says, Search me, God. Know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. I mean, God wants to hear these things, and, and we need to lay them before Him because we don't want to stay in our anxiety. We don't want to stay uh, in our in, 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 in bad thoughts or evil thoughts. We want those to be changed, and so therefore we take them to God. And we, and we ask his help in those things. And part of that is, is, is being able to do that is, is through reflection, a prayer of reflection. Uh, prayers of repentance. I think we maybe we're familiar with this, most of us. Uh, Psalm 51 is an ex- excellent example of a prayer of repentance. I won't read it now for the sake of time, but you could go back and look at that yourself. It's, it's, a, it's a, a psalm that David wrote when uh, after his adultery with Bathsheba. And in that psalm, David asks for God to renew his spirit, to give him a penitent spirit. He confesses his sin. Uh, he, re, he he also has is, I think, able, in a manner of speaking, to receive God's forgiveness. And, and he has a desire to obey God going forward. There, he even says, God, please grant me forgiveness, and I will teach others your ways. I will obey. And so there's this, when we think about prayers of repentance, it's not just something that we do to be relieved of our our guilt, but it's actually we're striving towards uh, towards God, and so we 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 want that penitent spirit. We want to confess, but we need God's forgiveness. We need to accept that. But then also there's a there's a desire to obey. There's prayers of lament. Psalm 22 verse two says, "My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, I did I find no rest." You know, it's prayers of the little men are for those times when we feel God's absence. Maybe it's a time of loss or a time of disappointment, a time of of difficulty, a time of shame. You know, these are things that we we lament, and and it's a normal part of the spiritual journey. I think sometimes I know for me personally, when I I've had some dark moments, I you know at first it seemed like something was wrong with me, but then as I began to read through the Psalms and really the Bible in general, you find that you know it's not all peaches and sunshine and unicorns and rainbows. I mean, there's difficult times in our spiritual walk and. And prayers of lament are actually a normal part of that. Uh, in fact, a greater portion of the Psalms are laments. And so the prayer of lament, is, it, it's, it's designed, it, it's, its intent is for inner transformation. We're taking our laments, we're taking our, 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 our sorrows, our, our, our senses of God's absence, and we're bringing that to Him and laying that at His feet and being transformed in that experience. The other is a prayer of surrender, and just prayers of surrender, example, would be Jesus in Matthew 26, 39, where he says, My Father, it is, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. So the idea there is that Jesus is surrendering his will to God's. He understood what God's will was, and that that will was not what, what he wanted. I mean, how many of us have faced that? I mean, I, that's almost a regular occurrence. And so prayers of surrender are where we... We submit our will to God's, and we are transformed from within when we do that. It takes work and it takes discipline to submit ourselves to God's will when we frankly want to do something else. And so these are all ways, types of prayer that are involved with inner transformation. They're, they're inward. But then there's the prayers that are upward. And these are the ones that obviously, by upward, meaning that they're directed towards God in our, our walk with Him. And, and really, I would call these prayers of adoration. Um, Psalm 35, verse 18 says, I give you thanks in the great assembly. Among the throngs, I will praise you. And this, this psalm mentions the two words that I would say, the two parts of adoration. One is, is praise, and the other is thanksgiving. And praise is really, it's, it's giving God honor and glory for who He is. And thanksgiving is, is, is thanking Him for what He has done. So there's who God is and there's what He's done in our lives. And so these two things make up praise and thanksgiving or prayer of adoration. Another concept here for pointing us towards God and upward is prayers of presence. It's actually, you might call it contemplation. It's actually being quiet in prayer. It's taking the time to, to, to be aware 
that God is all around us, to be aware that his presence surrounds us, and to sit in that awareness and to contemplate God and who he is and what he's trying to say to us. Um, Romans 8, 26 and 27 says the same, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. You know, it's this, you know, we're sometimes we're just in a space where we're just trying to be receptive and, and open and aware of what God is doing. And our, our spirit doesn't even have the words yet. There's communication happening. Uh, other aspects of sort of what I would call prayer of presence would be things like praying through Scripture, maybe using Scripture as prayer. I remember I spent an entire year just praying through the Psalms as part of my prayer life. I would, every day, would, would pray through several of the Psalms. Um, not all of them were always completely applicable, but I was amazed um, day to day how many of those things actually connected with me and my, my soul where I was. Uh, other types of prayer in this regard, uh, breath prayers. A breath prayer is like a single phrase that you think of and you uh, you use throughout the day. Um, you know, it's staying in God's presence is, is what, what it helps us do. So it might be something like, you know, God is an awesome God. And maybe that's something you just, you just it's a phrase that you have in your mind that you pray over and again throughout the day in different circumstances. This, is, this does several things. It, it, it helps us stay present with God. It also helps us guard against negative self-talk. So when, you know, perhaps I'm down on myself, but I, I've, I've kind of thought of a scripture that, that speaks to God's view of me, and I, that's something I pray constantly to help myself get out of my negative self-talk. It, and it also creates a rhythm of turning to God for us throughout the day. So breath prayer is actually kind of a cool um, a cool type of prayer to put in your in, in your reservoir and in, in ways of, of, of prayer. And then centering prayer, which can be just a word or two that basically is a, is a way to bring you back when your when your thoughts get scattered. And that's the way I, I'm that way many times in my prayers. I, my mind goes a mile a minute. And so to have a phrase like God is awesome, God is amazing, you are you are my protector, my provider, any any phrases like that from the Psalms, and that becomes my my catchphrase that that I bring back my wandering thoughts with, and uh, a great way to keep our focus on God, even when we are in the midst of prayer. The final thing is outward. Prayer is the outward, uh, which obviously we have inward, upward, and then outward. And these are things we pray for for others, right? Uh, Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. All kinds of petitions, right? Bringing these things to God. Um, I, just a few simple things here before we close. One is, you know, let's pray. Let's, let's pray for each other. Let's pray together. You know, one of the things I've tried to do uh, from time to time, and I've been successful at times and then not so successful at times, is, is to pray before every single appointment, every single engagement that I have. Just, just a quick prayer. If I'm going into a conversation, say a prayer. If I'm, if I'm meeting with somebody, to as we as we conclude, to say, hey, can we can we say a prayer together, and just bathe everything that we do in prayer, uh, all kinds of prayers and petitions, praying for others. Now, I'll say one one caveat about this. You know, when we begin to pray for others, it gets us into this really strange um, polarity between divine influence and human autonomy. What I mean by that is. We pray for God to do something in somebody else's life, and yet we also recognize that God is all-powerful, but that person has the ability to choose for themselves. And that can be frustrating because we we feel like we pray, and we pray for someone to change and say they don't change, and that's their choice. And so what do we do with that? And sometimes that can throw us off when we're thinking about, when we're thinking about prayer and praying for other people. And I don't have a clear answer to that because obviously, you know, it's there is something mysterious about that in the sense that God does work, but and I think God does work in the lives of others, uh, but they have to choose. But one thing I can tell you is that, that the Bible talks often about praying persistently. And one thing that I would encourage us to do when it comes to our uh, prayers and petitions is to be persistent in prayer. Uh, because God does hear our prayers, and so it's great to have a list of things that you're writing down that you're that you are um, that you're keeping track of that you've been praying for. And what's really encouraging is to go back and look at that list and see the things and ways that God has answered those prayers. 
So this is just a quick introduction, honestly, to, to prayer, and there's so much more to unpack here, but I, I wanted to, to throw some things at you tonight uh, you could think about, uh, discuss with your small group. I'm going to put some questions on the screen here as we close that you can pause the video and then discuss together tonight that has to do with prayer, and I hope these things have, will bless you and your walk with God as you strive to know Him better.